problem is their resettlement for all those who retire early so below 40 that is the time actually they need you know job and then they, they are sent out because the armed forces army especially the infantry and arms have to be kept young Nation Talks. It's a Metamorphs initiative and I'm Preeti Prakash. Uh, about Metamorphs, Metamorphs is uh, where it, it's a non-political non, uh, and uh, non-religious and voluntary organization uh, by veterans, uh, which works for uh, the good, the welfare of veterans and good uh, society is good uh, on the whole. The uh, I have today with me uh, Brigadier Kartar, who is the president of uh, Indian Ex Services League. It's a it's an organization of uh, uh, the veterans of the armed forces of India. As my guest Brigadier Kartar Singh to tell you about a little about him. He's taken part in the Bangladesh War. He's uh, also taken part in the IPK of operations. He's commanded LOC in the Baramula Division. Uh, good evening, uh, Brigadier Kartar, and welcome to Nation Talks. Good evening, ma'am. Jai Hind. Uh, thank you very much for having me on this uh, program. Uh, so uh, I'll start, Brigitte Kartar, by asking you about uh, about the organization of uh, Indian Ex Service uh, Services League. It's it's an organization uh, which works for uh, the good and welfare of veterans. You've been there since 2018 as the president of this organization, and I'm sure you've taken up a lot of issues as far as veterans are concerned with the government and on the personal level also. So I'll request you to tell me a little about the organization of uh, organization as the name suggests and what was the need for the organization, particularly when uh, when the Ministry of Defense ha already has a veteran cell and has a Department of Ex-Service uh, uh, Servicemen's Welfare. Yes, ma'am. Uh, R is not a new organization, ma'am. It was established in 1964 by Field Marshal Karyapa and General Thimaya, when they merged their both associations, that is pre-independence and post-independence. And it was decided that all the three services members will be included in this. Government of India then gave us a piece of land in Chanakyapuri. And our forefathers have all been a very senior armed forces officer, including Navy and Air Force. In uh, somewhere close to 1988, it became elected post by a preference, that is, the delegates from states come here to Delhi and they vote for the candidates who are fighting the election. Uh, my predecessor was left in general, and uh, because I was president of Rajasthan and I had interest in ex servicemen, being a fifth generation, my children, my son and daughter-in-law both are in the armed forces. I decided to work here as I was getting close to seventy. I have been vice chancellor of two universities, but I thought, no, I will work for my people called ex servicemen. And uh, you will be very happy to know, ma'am, that this is the first organization to be recognized by government of India among the four recognized now war wounded uh, uh, association, Air Force Association, and uh, one association of ex servicemen coordination, which was created in the times of uh, Mr. Pilot, Rajesh Pilot pilot uh, politician that is also recognized and department we are, we work more as catalyst with the department of uh, ex service uh, men welfare because we are the one who represent we have a regular meeting with them every quarter and we also pass on our problem which uh, we ex service men are facing in general and in particular how many uh, members are uh, constitute the uh, the organization yeah, ma'am. Uh, we are the largest organization in the country of Army, Navy, Air Force. We have four and a half lakh members registered who are authorized to vote and approximately three lakh who are members only up to state. That is, we are a total of seven and a half lakh members of organization. And okay. uh, Air Force Association, though a separately recognized organization, but in the ISL, we have a chair for one of the senior officers as advisor to President ISL. I have Air Marshal R.P. Mishra with me. I have Admiral Parashnath with me from the Navy. And they both sit next to me during my, they are my peers. 
and uh, we work together for all three services. We are the third largest organization and uh, we have very senior officers and representative. You will be very happy to know that in various states like Maharashtra, like uh, Bihar, like uh, Pondicherry, there are NCOs or NCO level people who are also elected president in their respective states. This is a democratically organized uh, organization on the lines of uh, the norms of democracy and there is no forcing that only officers will become. You will be happy to know that my senior vice president is a sergeant from uh, Ahmed Kaur, Havaldar from Ahmed Kaur. So we, have, we are the one who give this representation to them because they constitute nearly 90% of the population. So I was asking the uh, purpose of and the agenda of uh, IES. Uh, yes. Basically, ma'am, it started as a welfare and uh, we also maintain a chair of ex servicemen welfare created for Field Marshal Karyapa, who basically the, the threefold, basically. First is to help the ex servicemen to become self-dependent, number one. Secondly, we act as catalyst with the Department of XRUW, Kendra Senate Board, and uh, Director General Resettlement for uh, the ex servicemen to get them loans, to get them uh, reemployment. And we also act with the department to improve the conditions of ECHS, medical facilities for the re retired people. We also have a pension portal in the department here in Chanakapuri with which we raise, raise issues with the uh, CDA pension for all those cases which are referred to us and the states are not able to solve. This is the broader chart, uh, okay. charter and we were the first one man to just to tell you that this OROP movement was started by this organization. We even went to Supreme Court and our case was thrown out by the court by saying that pensions can't be revised like that. There has to be a policy and there has to be a uh, 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 pension regulation and pensions will be regulated by then. But later on, we again joined hands in 2015 with all the organization of the country, and we took up this issue, and that is how OROP was granted to us. Today, okay. the government is not revising the OROP as it was due, because uh, the uh, some of us have gone to the court, some of our members, people have gone to the court, and that is a damn good excuse by the government to say that it is now in the court. Okay. I'm sure once it is out of the court, the revision will also take place. Okay. Brigadier uh, Kartar, uh, what are the issues that are faced by veterans that you come across uh, most of the time? Yeah, the biggest problem is their resettlement for all those who retire early, so below 40. That is the time actually they need, you know, job. And then they, they are sent out because the armed forces, army especially, the infantry and arms have to be kept young. This is one problem. And the second problem is the ex-servicemen. I have carried out a survey in six states. They all want jobs in the villages where they are so that they can look after their family, be with their families, take, take care of their land, and also do that service. Whereas I've been telling them that it is not possible to create jobs there. You have to come to cities. Now people have started with the uh, increased pay, pension, retirement benefits. People have started settling down in cities and in cities based on their uh, skills, they do get jobs also. So this, is the, this was the biggest problem, which is finding some uh, solace by bringing them to the township or small towns. Uh, secondly, the second problem is uh, the ex-servicemen uh, who are pre-1965, that is all those who are, let's say, somewhere close to 80 plus, their pension problems and village where they in, in the remote corners of the country they live, and the banks were not initially coming about revising their pension in time, taking charge of all the orders and instruction issued by CDA pension. So we started a movement now that uh, all PSU banks which are looking after, they take it as a matter of pride, and they have started a scheme called DSP, Defense Services Pension Scheme in which they give, other than looking after the ex-servicemen pension, they also give a lot of profits, benefits, sorry. Okay. Um, so basically, yeah, basically we uh, also see that, you know, employment is a problem, not just for the youth, but, uh, but even uh, the armed forces, people who retire quite young, uh, 
uh, are looking for some sustenance model after yes, their, ma'am. If I if I can if I can tell you, the infantry recruits get recruited any time after 17, 18 years, and after 17 years of service, they are just 34 to 40, mm -hmm. and that is the age when they are married, growing children, and that is the time they need service and they are sent because the army has to be kept young and there are no promotions. Everybody does not get promoted, so that hierarchy doesn't get disturbed. So these people are sent on pension, mm -hmm. which has been a tradition nearly in all countries, uh, uh, at least Asian countries. Presently, once the mechanization comes and the modernization of uh, armed forces take place with, uh, let's say, uh, passing of time, then this length of service or thing might grow. There are there are some considerations already going on that the length of service of the people of uh, of the army should be enhanced to equivalent to navy and air force which is close to 55 56 years this is under consider very active consideration of the government but it may not also require you know meet the requirement because there's no they are thinking of lateral transfer of people from infantry to other services which has not been accepted uh, completely uh, okay uh... So, uh, you know, Brigitte Kartar, you've been quite, you've been interacting with the government on many fronts as far as the issues of veterans is concerned. Uh, how do you think the government has addressed these issues and has the, and not only this government, has the earlier government also addressed them? Is it to your satisfaction that the, the government has uh, uh, come across to you? Uh, actually speaking, as I said, we are the catalyst. We try and do uh, trouble them more than required sometimes. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, we being a completely a political organization, we in our constitution it is mentioned that if a person is a member of a political party, he cannot be here as a uh, appointment holder. He cannot be uh, in any appointment in the organization. And secondly, I also feel that the governments like to do everything what we want and they have been meeting our requirements, but for the restriction on defense budget. If you see the defense budget, even this year, it is just 1.61 of the GDP, which I am told by statistician that this was the type of budget in 1962. So defense budget not being sufficient, sometimes government also feels helpless. But if one has to, if the government has to, if a country has to maintain armed forces, which are very strong, modern and uh, agile, they have to cater for defense budget. Definitely, defense budget is the main cause. The deficiency in defense budget is the main cause of all the sins or all the problems of exorcism. Okay, so um, you are saying that the government has uh, uh, ha does listen to you and tries its best to uh, do as much as they can, right? Um, yes, ma'am. If we talk about not everything, but most of the things are taken care. For example, ECHS has come about in 94, which was a big problem. All the, you know, uh, you can say old people living in uh, places like Junjunu, Yajjar, Sikar, Nagor, they, they, they did not know where to go. Now they have an ECHS in nearly, like in, in Junjunu district itself, there are three. In Yajjar, there are three. The ECHS have been in, in, in the center of gravity areas where large population of ex-servicemen live, ECHSs have been surveyed and opened. 426 ECHS have been functioned in phase one, and the remaining will now start coming up in the second phase. The medical problem has been taken care of by a large, to a large extent, but because the population of ex-servicemen is increasing at a very rapid and high rate, you will be surprised to know that, you know, the, the residual lifespan of an individual has increased to 70 years, and every year, 60 to 65,000 ex-servicemen join the uh, bandwagon of ex-servicemen. Though it is very difficult to maintain for this, but government is trying their best. I am not supporting the government by saying so, but we are seeing it ourselves. I have been now in a retired man for the last 17 years, and I can see what all changes and what all improvements have been made. Okay, you keep uh, talking to the uh, government with the secretaries, the minister, you held uh, held a round of meetings with the with the very many 
um, people who are uh, who are sitting on the responsible chairs you think your talks have been fruitful and the government uh, um, uh, your persuasion of of, of uh, whatever matters has worked with the government but ma'am if you are looking for figures i really can't give you but i can tell you today the exerosmen today are slightly unhappy because oh, as i told you because of the need uh, because of the the country is growing and we are still looking like that you know that we have to travel so much to go to a mi roman rchs secondly i really don't want to say that government is not doing anything government has done a lot but i have told you because uh, i have told you that uh, the defense budget allotment is all so meager that is why the some of the program like extension of rchs impanel hospital veterans hospital these are not being created purely because of defense budget there is a requirement we also feel that our brothers in uh, arm who are serving they need better facilities better, better weapons be weapon better technology therefore we we are not saying everything should be for exercise men we are not saying so but defense budget must be enhanced government must do something so that even exercise men feel happy after all it is from villages and these areas the service men actually join they will join with very high motivation if the government is listening to us and fulfilling our requirements of exercise men okay like we just mentioned earlier about the orop issue uh, you have been a flag holder of uh, orop um, earlier how do you uh, how do you plan to take these this you know issue are you okay are you satisfied with whatever has been given to the ex servicemen till now on or, or do you still plan to take it forward uh, in some other manner whichever you want to no, ma'am i must uh, what I is must, the present status i, I must i must tell you i must tell you exactly there is some communication gap uh, with the government and with us now uh, the communication gap is that the the bureaucracy has informed the prime minister that we have given the orop i am not saying prime minister doesn't know about it he knows everything in this country but the point is that the orop having been given in 2019 was supposed to be revised in 2000 uh, sorry in 2014 was to be revised in 2019 which has not been done and now 2021 is also about to finish it has not been done i would like to add that this is purely because of these two reasons which government has, officials have told me one was the economic condition financial condition of the government fiscal condition of the government budget as well as uh, covid situation economy has really taken a uh, you know big beating the second reason which uh, which is coming to my uh, knowledge today everybody is talking is in every meeting they say what can we do you people have gone to the court so uh once let the court decide we will we will revise there is a hope ma'am i am quite sure about it that once the prime minister is about told about it or once he is informed that the revision was supposed to do and we have not been able to do the financial bureaucracy is playing their own trick they are saying two three ranks are getting higher pension we also know about it that subadar subadar major is getting higher pension than those who are retired after seven cpc so we are not asking their revision increase their that their pension has to be protected whereas other pension have to be increased now just to tell you uh, ma'am a sergeant or havaldar is getting 5600 rupees less today than the uh, havaldar or sergeant who is retired after 7 cpc likewise if you go up a brigadier is today getting 16000 rupees less basic pension so we are with the government and we are uh, in fact i don't want to say we are after them but we are at least keeping this issue alive and we are very much hopeful that the government one day will definitely revise it, it along with the areas this is my hope okay okay so it, uh, the melting uh, mm, uh, the entire the summary if we say of the uh, conversation could be that it's basically where where we are stuck is the budget uh, it's it's uh, the government there is too much to handle for the government as far as the armed forces are concerned and it does not have adequate budget for it do you do you uh, as you said i think that there has to be an increase in the budget in the defense budget which is which is pretty low as of now uh, and yes uh, I, i i totally agree with you 
in fact in the in the even in the developing countries the defense budget is up to 3%, 3 of the gdp like we say 6% for the education medical these the these standard yard six if you apply to a developing country like india the defense budget has to be minimum 3% of the gdp minimum i am saying but today it is 1.62 so nearly it is half of what is actually required to be uh, utilized by armed forces and the exercisemen this is the main thing and if the government uh, are if the government is able to collect their taxes gst is all in time and our countrymen uh, do help the government in that way i am quite sure next year onward the budget will increase a little okay uh, so that was very enlightening brigadier kartar to be talking to you thank you so much uh, to have come to my show nation talks and um, i'm sure we are hopeful that there are good days to come as far as orop is concerned and even other issues of uh, of veterans are concerned because they are the ones who have given their lives for the country and uh, they do deserve a better future after retirement as well thank you so much for thank you very much man i my last line i would like to say what you have said that one of my job is to keep the orop issue alive so that our exercisemen get what they deserve yeah thank you very much and god bless you Thank you so much for talking to me.